Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 8813 Winter Soldiers from Iowa. They just have an incredibly amazing robot, both on the hardware and software side. They're getting ready for the Iowa State Championships, and we're going to talk about how they were able to make such a compact, efficient scoring machine, and how they decided to switch from a previous design into a new robot. All that and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Okay guys, let's get started with your new robot. So first walk us through the drivetrain very briefly. Uh, you know, what's special about it? How'd you get it to be so compact? What were some of the challenges you faced with it? I uh, don't. Yeah, okay. So our drivetrain, um, we're using a simple parallel plate setup with uh, rev mechanism wheels and belts. And uh, one thing we did to make it compact is we sanded these down. So you can actually see there's these all these little silver markings and that just makes it a little bit thinner. And then we also have this odometry system, which we, um, we custom made our own uh, casing for the encoder so that we could make it as small as possible. And all of those can retract with servos, which you can see up here. Yeah, wow, that, that's really incredible. So, I mean, this whole robot just like screams compactness. And so one question I have for you regarding this is this is obviously your second generation robot. We can see the old one uh, on the side of the table. And so when going from that design to here, compactness was a factor as, as you can tell and so what packaging challenges did you have between going from that circular drivetrain to this more traditional parallel plate style uh yeah so our original chassis we set it up in an x drive um we wanted our x drive to be round so it wouldn't get hooked on the pole so we made it into a cake pan um we had a couple of challenges here because our odometry pods, there wasn't enough vertical space inside of the cake pan um, to be able to retract those and go over the ground junctions without getting stuck. So we thought about still having a round robot, but um, just being able to fit those odometry pods was not going to be very pra practical mm -hmm. in this of a cake pan so. so so when you mentioned cake pan you mean you guys use like a cake pan as the foundation of the chassis or it's just like the shape of a cake pan uh it actually is the foundation pan. of the chassis um wow we found a 15 inch cake pan on webstaurant store <laughs> i think that uh it was probably one of the biggest cake pans you could get so <laughs> Yeah, and so like materials wise, like is that something you would recommend for other teams to like look at alternative sources for materials and stock, or would you just recommend going towards more traditional like McMaster car, E Street plastics, that type of stuff to buy your supplies? So uh, we would not really recommend using a cake pan because <laughs> this is a uh, kind of lower grade aluminum. It's very gummy. It doesn't machine very well. Um, but for these, uh, this robot, we use like these black panels on the top are just like recycled Euro board mm -hmm. from uh, past game fields. And then the aluminum we got from eBay and we haven't noticed any serious problems with uh, getting materials that way. Got it. Yeah. And so one final question I have about your guys' drivetrain before we jump into the rest of your robot is about your motor selection. So I know most teams... I'd say most teams tend to go with like the yellow jacket or Neverest motors, but I see you guys are running those Rev Ultra Planetaries. And so was there like a, was that another compactness reason or was that just something because you guys have used those in the past, you stuck with them? Yeah, so they are actually are a bit more compact than the Go build -a motors because they don't have the shaft sticking out. So you can see we have the pulley, it's bolted onto the hub and then it just basically ends there. 
and also we wanted the um we like the uh swappable gear Cartridge, ratios yeah and we also like that it has a like removable connector mm -hmm. so that makes it more modular and we can pop out this whole motor assembly with just i think three screws got it and that way we can do maintenance yeah well, there's so much more to talk about on this robot, so let's jump into your intake system. Uh, you guys have a, again, just extremely compact design and mechanically so sound. So walk us through it. Let's start with the extension and then go into the rest of it. All right, so, yeah, sure. So our extension is really very, um, it's very reliable. We don't have any string rigging on here. Instead, we've chosen to use a high-speed lead screw to drive the arm in and out, so it makes this whirring sound when it comes in and out. And um, so on the very front, we have a belt drive for the lead screw. We decided to keep the belt drive nice and loose because that way it is more efficient and it doesn't bend the lead screw out. Overall, this design is a lot like on a 3D printer. If you look at your 3D printer Z axis, a lot of times they have a lead screw that sticks up and it's not supported on the top side, but it's supported by the motor. So in order to make this as efficient as possible, we only have it supported at the end. That way, like any neat, uh, time it needs to flex, it has some room to flex. Um, we tried it with a bearing in the back, but it was just a lot less efficient. So. Yeah, that that's really innovative. I haven't seen really any other teams. I know we ran a lead screw for our lift. Uh, back in Rover Ruckus, but since then it hasn't been a popular option with the rise of, you know, string and pulleys and all of this. So uh, from a programming perspective, wow, yeah, that is just so fast. So from a programming perspective, how does it look? Is it Are there any challenges that you need to give advice for to teams that are looking to implement a similar system, or was it really pretty simple? Um, I would say it was really simple. Like, you don't even... We are just using the motor encoder because it's such a tight coupling with the slide that it gives us per position. And then from there, it was just, we have a simple custom PID and yeah. that was really all we needed. Yeah, I mean, then easy does it sometimes, right? So that's fantastic. Going on to your arm for the intake, walk us through some of the hardware. I know it's changed a little bit throughout just this robot itself. So talk about the decision behind that and yeah, let's talk about it. This arm or the deposit? Let's do the intake arm now, and then we'll talk about the deposit. So this arm, as you saw earlier, can extend, but it can also uh, pivot this way, this way. So when it grabs a cone, it's able to grab it and sort of spin it onto the deposit. And just recently, we added these two servos right here to uh, minimize the... Um, just now we've added this these servos to minimize the amount of like bounce it has when uh, it goes down and to make it more precise at which position it can reach. Mm -hmm. So yeah. pre previously we were using a core hex motor to power this arm and it was actually astonishingly good for the price of the motor, but it had a lot more backlash. And what we found is um, when you give it less power, it has lower basically torque that it can handle. So it would not be able to reach precise positions when you had to give it very small increments of power to reach that position. So we have instead now these axon servos, which we found handle it a lot better. And we also added this um, surgical tube counter spring that kind of pulls it up and just makes it a little bit, a little bit easier on the servos. Sure. And so talking about like a programming perspective of your entire intake subsystem, you know, extension, claw, arm, wrist, everything, what uh, what automations do you guys have that are just really, really helpful? Because looking at your teleop, I mean, you guys just don't miss cycles. Like every single cycle you score, it's super smooth, super fast, very impressive. So in teleop, some automations we have are we have this distance sensor, which can detect uh, right here. When the when the cone is close enough, and then it just automatically closes the claw, brings the arm up, rotates it. That's actually powered on. And just it cycle. takes it to the deposit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and then in autonomous, do you just use like pretty much the same methods and algorithms as you do? Wow, yeah, that's just so smooth. Yeah. 
Um, but so yeah, what I was saying is an autonomous, just pretty much the same algorithms that you use in teleop, you copy over into your autonomous programs. It's pretty much the same, except for the arm height. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And so now jumping into your deposit, walk us through the hardware behind that. Uh, you know, talk about the transfer process. You guys seem to have it down to a T. So that's one of the most difficult things for teams to get always. And I'm sure there's a lot of insight we could get from you guys. Yeah, so our transfer, we work really hard on trying to get it to be fast. One of the things that we found absolutely essential to getting our deposit to work was running slow mode video tests. So we would set up our robot on the field or, on, or just on the floor at home, and we would set a cone in front of it, and we would try to cycle. And what, what we would do is we would watch it and see where the cone was going besides the deposit when it wasn't working. And a lot of times, like, we had our claw time-based so that it would open at the correct time. But sometimes it would just, like, wait for too long, and then the arm would bounce and the cone would come off. Or it would open too early, and then it would just throw the cone past the deposit. Mm -hmm. So we had to get that timing just right for that to work. Mm -hmm. And then, like, looking at the linear slides you're using for your deposit, what are those? Uh, would you recommend teams to go with this? It seems like you guys have a um, composite system of one stage of MGN slides and then one stage of Misumi's. Um, and so is this something you'd recommend teams to do, or would you prefer a different design having completed this? So uh, we kind of chose this... Um this dual slide design based on um, initially it was actually based on the whole pattern and kind of just combining all the different slides that were compatible with each other to see which one would give us the necessary reach with the fewest stages. And since these SAR3 slides can extend, they can overextend because we have the pulley mounted so high, mm -hmm. we could get a lot of extra travel that way in a fairly small package. And then these MGN7 slides, these green ones, we just got on eBay. And um, they're, I think they work pretty well for this application, but they're very um, difficult to work with. So I think for other teams, I would recommend the larger MGN9s which use uh, larger screws mm -hmm. and are less likely to just shear off the screws or any other strange problems that you might run into. Yeah, that's an small. interesting thing that happened is our screws actually did shear off on our loop. Wow. They're so soft. Yeah. And so I think the last question I have for you guys, uh, just as a whole, is having completed two robots, you know, and both of them were working pretty well, um, is doing a rebuild something you would suggest to, suggest to other teams? Or like, what's one advice you would have to other teams so that their rebuild does go well like yours did? Yeah, so this year, our uh, whole rebuild plan, we started out the season thinking we had the like best thing going. Like, we were going to have the fastest thing with this arm, and we weren't going to have to rebuild. But what we did to determine that a rebuild was necessary is when we looked at all of the problems that we were observing with our first robot, we could see that they kind of uh, generalized towards one solution that was a rebuild, mm -hmm. um, opposed to like, oh, we could just fix each of these little individual problems. Like, it seemed like so much better to just go with rebuilding than try to mm -hmm. fix small things. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. So. Yeah, in terms of helping other teams with their rebuilds, I would say, like, try not to wait until the last minute, of course. Mm -hmm. um, we rebuilt, like, by the last week meet, or mm -hmm. second meet, was it? Yeah. Um, so that way we had a lot of time to optimize our, our next robot and get it working well for state. Got it, got it. Yeah, Winter Soldiers, thank you so, so much. Your guys' robot is just really really impressive from all standpoints and i'm really glad we could show the community what you guys have going on behind the scenes so reporting for first updates now i'm abhas and with me here is team 8813 winter soldiers thank you everyone thank you. thank you this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors solidworks is free for first teams over 80 percent of u.s engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use solidworks to design great products 
SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Funds YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. <laughs>